Good afternoon, Tama friends. Welcome back. I hope you had a uh, mindful lunch, not eating too less uh, or uh, eating too much. <laughs> so now we are taking time, one hour of time for uh, Q&A about uh, today's morning topic, uh, which is Sampaja, uh, daily cultivation, how to practice Sampajan in our daily life. This is our topic which we discussed today morning in many aspects. So please uh, uh, raise your uh, hand so then Brother Sunny will give you uh, the mic and the mic for the recording. So two mics, so don't worry, they are not heavy. Uh, perhaps we start with that gentleman. You asked a question in the morning. Uh, you, what did you ask? Yes, just to get started. Sorry, yeah. No, Bante, this morning my question was whether Sampajana is similar to Yoniso Manasikara. Ah. Now I explain, right? They are yes, different. Yes, yeah. that's right. Okay, good. Yeah. But I've got another question, Bante. Okay. Just, just, just to start the ball rolling, yeah. Bante, this morning also mentioned about uh, the 10 Akusalas, right? Mm -hmm. um, I noticed that in most suttas, they only talk about the four infringements in the five precepts, mm -hmm. one to four. Even in the, uh, in the Patana Kama Vago, which you can find in Angulimala, it talks only of the, the four infringers in the five precepts. So I'm just wondering why the fifth, fifth precept is not mentioned at all in any of the suttas. Oh. It is implied. Sorry? It is implied. The, the fifth one is implied. No, the sutta does not, does not succinctly no, so, mention at all. Yeah, technically it is not mentioning. But the, uh, the background to the fifth precept is implied within the conversation. Now you might see that uh, Sura Mere Majmavadatana precept uh, has not been particularly discussed. Yeah. But the background to Surah Meriya has been discussed already. Uh, what is the meaning of Surah Meriya? The fifth precept, not taking intoxicants. Let's be very uh, simple about this. Hmm. Not taking any fermented food or beverages or distilled food or beverages to an extent where you can't make a sound judgment. Because uh, intoxication arises from two reasons. One is uh, fermentation, the other one being distillation. So, uh, in, not even in the suttas, but also in Satipattana Sutta, uh, the Surameras, uh, the, the background where someone is going to lose the presence of mind, is discussed. So, that's why it is not a part of, because it's a very tiny thing, everybody understands. Uh, that's why uh, the, the first four are highly mentioned. And but five precepts are not the Buddha's teaching. They were there before the Buddha. Buddha simply uh, encouraged. The Buddha's in, uh, innovation is ten kusalas. But, but they just to add further, in the, in the fifth precept, is there a threshold that you must, you must cross? Yeah. Because 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 it basically says that taking any of the intoxicant that, that can cause uh, cause cause you to lose your 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 this one's, uh, sense of uh, probity and so on. Yeah. So so if you just say have a glass of beer, but uh, you are perfectly sober, you are perfectly sane, your your mind is clear. Is that an infringement of uh, the fifth precepts, even yeah. though it does not cause heedlessness at all? Yeah, very interesting. I normally explain this uh, in my talks actually. Uh, Suramir, now as you can see, everyone's intoxication is different. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when someone eats one plate of rice, that person becomes intoxicated. <laughs> so Suramir for him, he is that 
one plate maybe he has to she has to lower it to half of the rice of the plate right there are some others who eat two three plates of rice still sober but overeating is a problem why you go for two three uh, plates of rice it will create you uh, some obesity you know which is not uh, good so um, how to practice surame it is not about it's on, not only about alcohol because we consume alcohol <coughs> not in the example you said uh, say for instance you are catching a cough and then you are trying out different over the counter medications which are not going to work that means your cough has spread it uh, in a different way then you see a doctor now doctor wants to give you a prescribe syrup at that point he or she prescribes a codeine uh, based syrup which is a narcotic and then they ask you to take it just before you sleep you can't uh, operate machines you can't drive so what's the idea of this that means uh, your cough bacteria or virus has to be approached uh, after the drug puts you to sleep and then can work on it but we don't take it from that perspective because it's a medical requirement. So medical prescriptions are okay. Sometimes there are people who are having severe pain, say uh, severe knee pain, but you have to wait in the lineup for the surgery. But during the time, doctor has to prescribe a certain painkiller, maybe heroin. They might uh, prescribe a medication like heroin. Uh, you know, like when uh, people met in an accident, uh, the paramedics uh, initially give them uh, morphine, it's a narcotic. But there is someone who is going to the black market and getting lots of heroin, <coughs> lots of uh, morphine, lots of codeine, Init you know, deliberately wants to be uh, intoxicated. That is surame, breach of surame. So medically it's okay. On the other side, social gathering. Now you know, uh, when you are going for a social gathering, uh, there is something called social drink. But if you know the amount of, if you can avoid, it's good. But there are times you can't avoid it, right? Because you want to maintain the, the company. If you can avoid it, it's, it's much better. But if you cannot, even still at that point, you are having a drink to an extent where you are not going to be intoxicated. You are not taking it just because others are pestering you, you are stick. Uh, to a glass of this and that. So uh, that is how we take it. Uh, so uh, the threshold is your own threshold of intoxication. You have to know your own threshold. Right? You have to know uh, at which point you become intoxicated. Either, not even the alcohol. Say for instance, uh, sura part. Maria is uh, distillation. Sura means fermentation. All the bakery products, especially uh, you know, even a bread made from yeast, uh, right? Let's say um, you are consuming some of the pastry stuff a lot, uh, which they might have added certain uh, things, even rice. So if you know the limit of your intoxication, you should be good. Uh, distillation is good to avoid, it's not necessary, but if you uh, cannot avoid it as a part of social gathering, because we have to understand the conditions, this is not the Buddha's time, so we understand where are you going to end up with that thing. That is how we are going to interpret, understand Sura Meriya, Majjama Vadattana precept. So this is implied in our Sati practice. This is implied. That's why Buddha did not pick up this separately. Thank you, Bhante. Yeah. If you have a question, please uh, raise your hand. Now this doesn't mean our Bhante told today to drink, huh? uh, don't, don't get that misunderstanding. I'm trying to discourage you. But I understand the conditions. Hey, Buddhism is something many people misunderstand because of this ultra freedom. Right? When you have ultra freedom, not like in Christianity, you can't do this, the God will punish you. In, because of the ultra freedom Buddhism has in order to understand the middle path, uh, people might misunderstand. That's why I'm telling you the parameters, your own parameter. It's like even karma, right? Let's say someone might say, uh, I want to slap you. 
But I love you. My intention. Actually, the first intention was the same intention. So karma is not something to kill somebody. It's not a free pass to disturb other people. Because all matter is intention and how you do it. Yes, the next question. Uh, Ade, my question is on the fourth precept. Uh, many people understand the fourth, pre the fourth precept like in the translation is only to avoid the false speech. But then the wrong speech, like the four types of wrong speech. So can you elaborate on the fourth precept? Is it just telling the false, uh, you know, false speech or does it cover the other three as well? Actually, if you look at the larger, broader perspective of the Usavada Viramani, not lying, it includes the uh, rest of the three precepts too. Let me tell you how it works. Now, lying. But you know, uh, lying has to be understood in many ways. Don't take it technically. Sometimes, we, when we speak about the truth, there are people who are trying to uh, clash each other. So we are going to delay that truth. We can postpone. Huh? Sometimes we postpone our emotions too. Huh? You get a very bad WhatsApp message now, very bad email now. You think in tomorrow by afternoon I'm going to reply to this email. But if I email now, I'll be writing in a very bad tone. Because I'm not calm down enough. So I'm taking time. When I take time for my emotions, I feel more calm. And then I can reply, I can respond to people peacefully with my true self. Not my artificial, superficial self. So, uh, Musavada has to be practiced, I mean the opposite of Musavada, with some understanding. I have a very funny example. I mean, let's say someone is trying to kill somebody else, harm, and then chasing after that person. Then the first person who is the victim here, going to knock a door of somebody. He said, someone is following me, can you please help me? So the owner says, yes, I got to help you. Karuna, metta, you can go uh, into that room, you can hide under my, beneath my bed. Now the person, the attacker also coming and so this person went inside, he understood that the owner let him in. So he asked him, is there someone like this, uh, you know, features? came into your house. Yeah, yeah I, never li I never lie. He came in. He went into that room. Now he's under that bed. <laughs> now just imagine this very tiny, simple example. Truth. When you want to be truthful, uh, you might think that way. Actually, at that point, you cannot tell that thing to that attacker. You have to understand the condition. Because your priority is to save people, save being. That is Panatipata Vedamani. It is bigger than uh, Musavada. Just because you want to practice Dhamma, you're going to uh, make other people guinea pigs. Huh? You can't make other people guinea pigs for your own Dhamma practice. Save other beings. That's the main thing. Even Bodhisattva. Bodhisattva's main intention is to save other beings. Even Bodhisattva's delay his or her enlightenment for other people. Until the last person going to be enlightened, he or she still become a bodhisattva. So in that way, uh, at that point, that person has to be smart, diplomatic in answering to that person. Saving the life is number one. Then, uh, let's say you cannot lie, you cannot change the topic. Huh? <laughs> Sometimes when you, are, you cannot lie, you, you should be smart enough to change the topic. Maybe you can ignore, maybe you can walk away, maybe you can do other gestures. You are not going to lie. But there may be a moment that you are in the worst case scenario, that you have no other option, but you have to say a technical lie to save someone. That is also okay. Why? You know the intention. Karma is intention, not just the action outside. But we don't go to that place as the first approach. So now you ask whether the other three wrong speech, bad mouthing, uh, hurtful words, and uh, gossiping and idle chatting, why are they part of the Musawada? Yes. Let me explain to you how it works. Now, when you keep talking unnecessarily, 
you are a very talkative person at a certain point you run out of your vocabulary right you may run out of your own vocabulary then you will add your own different imaginative words into that this happened that happened i saw this then what is happen to what is going to happen then definitely you are going to bad mouth about somebody because you are using illusionary uh, imaginative words so then you are breaching second wrong speech to uh, making the second wrong speech you are bad mouthing now when you keep talking unnecessarily you have no moderation now just talk about uh, moderation in speech threshold in our speech not about the alcohol <laughs> in the first place uh, then you may hurt other people because when you always imagine people imagine those people who imagine a lot definitely hurt other people have you seen that they always imagine a situation seen and then bring it up to other people and then blame other people so that means hurting other people also can happen because of not practicing musawada viramani then when you keep talking in the same way you will definitely waste your precious time the time that you have for your valuable things and at the same time you will be gossiping about other people so that means when you really we into the musawada lying you will definitely um, you know um, uh, execute other three wrong speeches too but the buddha wanted to take them out to show them that they are there are different angle but the root cause of wrong speech is musawada yeah thank you bhakti afternoon bhante uh, the word sati samajana so sati precedes sambandana so does it mean that we have to practice sati then only sambajana will arise automatically or we have to practice both with intention not sati precedes sambajana sati sambajana are simultaneous simultaneous okay they both have to arise together now say uh, let's take a very simple example sati is attention mm -mm. in order for me to understand what's going on i need to know uh, i need to have a certain attention for that but i don't know the xyz details about it that those details come from sampajanya now say for instance i'm talking to you now huh? i have attention about you and i know i talk to you and i know what i'm talking to you and i know how long i'm going to talk to you and you are listening to me i know all these i have understood the situation and with an understanding i'm talking to sampajan is working attention is for you so sati sampajanya work together uh, so sati sampajanya work together sati reinforces sampajanya sampajanya reinforces sati uh, so that is how it works So does that mean these two are two different entities? Two different uh, things. things. But sampajanya is the high, higher part of the practice. If you say mindfulness is the both, sati sampajanya is the mindfulness. Sati is just bare attention. Uh, then sampajanya is the uh, uh, clear knowing of what you are doing in that particular task. So one has to work diligently on both entities. no diligence has to be there for everything right yeah. virya there should be virya we talk about virya today uh, when you have proper virya you know the attention part you know the knowing part uh, so there's nothing such as you no know, if i work on sati then some jnana will arise automatically no no Is that's that what we... happened to many people already <laughs> <laughs> okay so <laughs> they only do sati. sati they think sati is the only thing yeah. no sati sampajanya together mm -hmm. so buddha always take them together sati sampajanya kai kai anupasse viharati ata api sampajano sati ma vinaye loke sampajano sati ma sati sampajanya they both work together so but our people they strip out the sampajanya part okay 
It's like the Western people who strip out the uh, original yoga from India. Yeah. They do it their Western yoga, right? Their own version. But it's not the original yoga in India. And also the Satipatthana meditation that we know when you go to the secular meditation practices. Yeah, so these are working together. Okay, sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Yeah. Probably uh, two sides of the coin. Coin, two sides. So uh, we, we will see other people and then we'll come back to you. Yeah, so keep, save your questions. Yes. Here, yes. Uh -huh. Good afternoon, uh, Bante. <coughs> this morning, Bante talked about the <coughs> excuse me, the mindfulness and the sampajana on the uh, a very good example <coughs> of walking on the tiles and you reflect on the <coughs> the four uh, elements. But how do we um, during our meditation? How do we uh, apply the sampajana as well? Because most of the mentors tell us that not to think so much about. What you hear, for example, you do not uh, go into the details of the, the noise, the origin of the noise. We just ignore it. So if let's say we hear a noise, we know we are mindful about that. So how does this sam, uh, Sampajana apply in this case? Uh, can you rephrase the question again? Okay, uh, during the meditation, okay. let's say we hear a noise. So we normally uh, ignore the noise. We do not find out the origin of the noise and what causes the noise, mm. right? But how would this uh, Sampajana arise if, let's say, we hear noise? Sampajana must have arisen already, that's why you're ignoring. So we don't go into <laughs> investigation. No, it's, 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 it's embedded, it's, it's built in, in the practice. Mm. That's why you know that I don't need to focus on this. Actually, not ignoring, don't ignore. You don't interpret. Ignore means that uh, teachers way. <coughs> When you see people who you don't like, cover your eyes. Okay. Huh? When you hear th uh, things you don't like, you cover your ears. That is ignoring. The, the better word in the Dhamma is, you are not interpreting, labeling. Normally we interpret, we call it Sanya. When you see somebody new, we are going to see that new person from our subjective understanding that we had same experience with somebody like that before. This subjective understanding is sanya. So we are not ignoring, we are not interpreting. I know it is another sanya, but I wanna, don't want to go there. Sometimes we do that, right? Uh, sometimes we do. Let's say you are on a tight cut to bone budget and uh, you can't afford something, then you really don't want to focus on that, right? Because this is not for me, it's too, way too high expensive. Uh, I mean, uh, kind of a lame example, but uh, it's like not interpreting not labeling because i already have a focus that thinking also happens from sampajan because you have already uh, you know uh, found out your parameters of your activity the particular task so it's sampajan already in within that activity okay thank you bante is how do we or how do until you judge or different uh, define the term ill ill intention wrong intention because to me uh, to judge judge whether an uh, intention intention is ill or wrong uh, it could be blinded by ignorance and then it becomes a chicken and egg problem reflection Reflection. That is how we are going to distinguish that. Now you are, you are, think, you are asking, um, uh, we are bothered by uh, not being able to uh, dissect the good and bad, yes. time to time. Huh? We cannot dissect. Uh, that is the norm, nature, commonplace. In Buddhism, the Buddha says, we have to bring reflection uh, into our thoughts, speech and then 
actions. He said we have to do it in three, uh, nine ways. Uh, reflect and think. Uh, sorry, uh, reflect before think. Reflect during think. Reflect after think. Reflect before speak. Reflect during speak. Reflect after speak. Reflect before act. Reflect during act. Reflect after act. Now, say for instance, let's take the, the most difficult part. How to reflect before we think? Do we reflect before we think? No, thoughts are, somebody might say, thoughts are natural. But only when you are given by a teacher to write an essay, can you brainstorm? Then you are going to customize your thoughts. Aren't you? You customize what thoughts I need to think about. You are customizing your thoughts. Uh, these are the thoughts I want to have in order to write this article, essay. So that means, Buddha says, we have to uh, reflect about our thoughts. Are these good? Th what are the good thoughts? Thoughts of not being very greedy about what we have, what we don't have. So there are there may be thoughts coming to us. So uh, uh, on the spot, outrightly, we are going to distinguish whether this is a greedy thought or a dana thought. The second good thought is metta thought. Uh, thoughts might come to you, but you reflect. Is this a wholesome thought, metta thought or angry thought. At that point, you are going to distinguish, ah, this is not an angry thought, this is a metta thought, or maybe an uh, angry thought. Uh, so like that, you have to reflect and then think, even before even talk. Not many people uh, reflect and talk. They talk what comes to their mind right away, and then there is a big problem. Then they apologize later. So things have happened already. Right? Sometimes this anger problems go for many decades, for one word. Other people judge. They don't have sampajanya too, sati sampajanya. So they have already judged about the other person. They say, you have deliberately told this word to me at that time. So I have to take it seriously. So that's why we have to understand reflection is the key to separate out uh, ill thoughts. Ill thoughts, speech, actions. Does it make sense? So still need more clarifications. <laughs> Which means after I reflect it, um, how do I know whether the result is wholesome or unwholesome? Is there a framework for, uh, for uh, a guideline? Okay, uh, that is very hard to say. I mean, the larger, broader result is hard to say. But initially, we know there are 10 good things that we can do, 10 kusala, wholesome activities. Not killing, not stealing, not uh, sexually misbehaving for actions. I think you are asking the thoughts. So not uh, being covetous, greedy, uh, not having ill will. Uh, that means what you call uh, thoughts of uh, protecting other beings and not having wrong view. So we know the effect of these three good thoughts. If you learn more, I think, I don't know whether you have learned that. If you learn the uh, larger, broader effect of these three good thoughts, then you know uh, this is something, this is a thought that comes from one of those three aspects. So you already understand this will be the effect. So in order to understand that, you need to learn a little bit of uh, those three wholesome thoughts. Then uh, uh, you can understand the benefit of those thoughts. Okay, my question for question is uh, how to control our anger when it arises. Second question is uh, this morning Bante got touched about cheap dana. Right. So Not cheap dana. <laughs> I think I misunderstand then. I, uh, dana in a cheap way. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, because uh, yeah. because we are lay person, so we have our teachers that we have follow this wall. Mm. So uh, I just want Bante because Bante just now got mentioned about the word cheap dana and also uh, Buddha got mentioned got actually it's not. Let me tell you, it's not cheap dana. The effect of dana will be cheap. 
effect. Um, and the way you do it will become cheap. Also the effect, the, the result will be cheap. Otherwise we cannot say dana is cheap, you know. <laughs> Every dana is valuable, so, yeah. Okay, so you have two questions. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Don't control your anger. In Buddhism, we don't control anything. We protect our thoughts. This controlling is a part of uh, uh, English dialogue uh, because they don't believe that uh, uh, anger is something that we can uh, respond with a substantial answer within the Western background, uh, right? Because there is the justified anger for uh, things that are happening in the West. They say that anger is reasonable. Uh, I would say protest against uh, unfair governments. They have their own ways of thinking. So that's how this controlling part has crept into the uh, Buddhist dialogue. But I think it's not uh, fair because we have to learn through the teaching. Let me tell you. There are three things to do with regard to anger. First of all, is anger a bad emotion? Yes. Huh? Yes. Depends on where you take it. Where you take it. Now, what is anger? A disliking about what's happening. Maybe not even about the people. We go back to our past example, thorny shrub. There's a thorny shrub and you are stepping onto that. You don't know what is that. And it pricks you. Then, then you are not happy about what happened. Something prick on your uh, foot. Anger, right? It is anger. Have you seen some animals? They are even uh, attacking inanimate things. Some snakes, they think it's a being, but they are very angry about what happened. Even some humans do that. Huh? They throw things and then they break when they are angry, <laughs> right? There are people like that. So, uh, anger is by default a normal emotion, uh, but uh, the way how you take it, things can happen. But our uh, idea is always to work on anger and then to lower it uh, for the sake of good. Say for instance, if a snake cobra comes to this hole right now, what will happen to you? Run. Huh? Run. You are running. Run. Would you have metta for the cobra? Yes. Uh, yes. Huh? yes. Now you say, but when the real cobra comes in, <laughs> we have to find out where is that metta. Why we are running away? We have a little bit of dosa, anger. Why this guy is coming here? You know? He could have stayed somewhere else. Why is he coming here? When the people trespassing in our comfort zone, then we are not happy. We, until that time, we are, we are become very big metta people, you know. <laughs> very big prayers of metta. Metta has been a mantra, you know, sometimes. We, we, we uh, chant, pray for 48 hours, the 72 hours. But when really this happens, it's not. Actually, when the snake comes in, the feeling that you want to run away is not a bad feeling. You have to save yourself. Right. So we normally call it. It's an effect from the uh, adrenaline hormone, the fear hormone. Otherwise, we cannot survive. Right? I mean, the, the animal is so scared already, so he's going to bite all of uh, the people over there, right? So, uh, anger is there in that way, you know, the, the minor level. So, what the Buddha said is that we have to lower it all the time. Work on the anger. There are three areas to look at our anger. One is before anger arises, before anger arises within us, during the anger, after the anger goes away. I think we experience these three moments all the time. Uh, what are we supposed to do uh, before anger arises? That's what you are doing here now. You are learning a lot about metta, how to practice metta. How to practice metta? We have to practice metta to us first and then to loved ones, then to neutral people huh? and then challenging difficult ones and then all living beings so we have to spread to everybody C cannot exclude anybody that person in your household may be the one you don't like you can't exclude huh? you have to bring that person to in your family members you have to include all these people so before 
anger arises, we are trying to make sure that we have the right gadgets to work on it. But now you are becoming angry, not now, huh? let's say somebody is becoming angry. Can metta work at that time? No. May I be well, happy, peaceful, may no harm come to me, may no difficult come to me, may no uh, what problems come to me, all the problems have already come. And uh, may no fear come to me, may I always meet his success, may I have determination, success, patience to overcome all inevitable problems, prob but still you are angry. You know? Can it work? When you are already angry, metta is not going to work. Right? It's like a no point return. When you are driving on a, a road, you are almost going to uh, get the amber. Then you have to go through the intersection, otherwise you might be stuck with the incoming oncoming traffic. It's a no point return. Metta might not work at that time. So then you have to do something else. What is that? You have to recognize, accept that you are angry already. Recognize it. In the Western schools, they have a very nice uh, acronym for that. Uh, they say RAIN methodology. RAIN. R-A-I-N. Uh, we can use that for anger, actually, during the time we are angry. RAIN means R stands for recognize I am angry already now. Actually, that is the most important thing. When you are going through anger, the most important thing is to accept, I'm sorry, to recognize that there is anger within me now. Right? Let's say someone is angry, but you're going to say, hey, look at you are angry. Don't try to teach me, you know. This is me. You have to accept who I am. Because people don't want to uh, recognize even. What about uh, doing something to work on it? <laughs> All these sometimes people who already know some dumb also. Right? And then uh, the second thing to do is accept. R-A. A stands for accept. I am angry, I have to accept. Whoever I am, I may know a lot of Dhamma, but I am angry now. I have to accept. And then third is, R A I investigate. R A I. I have to investigate my anger through physic, uh, physical, uh, physical, psychological, emotional uh, channels. How to investigate? What is happening when I am angry? When you are angry, you can't speak easily, you are losing your voice, and then uh, you are having hard breath, you can't breathe properly, uh, everything else, everything will become a problem to you, you are bad mouthing about everybody, everything has got into a big roller coaster at that point. Right? So we have to investigate what's happening to me. I sometimes ask people to uh, do uh, ang anger, uh, what do you call, anger journaling, you know. Uh, write down what's happening, <laughs> what's, what are the thoughts coming up to you. Then you will see later on how evil are you at that point. Right? The good person that you are thinking, how evil can you go? So, this is I. Then N, last one, rain. N means non-identify. That means don't identify anger with you. That means anatta, anicca dukkha anatta. Anatta means you are refer making a reference to someone. You made me angry. There are people who accept uh, anger partially. You know, I'm angry, I know. But you are the one who made it. <laughs> Partial acceptance of the anger. Why is it? Because they cannot separate, deconstruct uh, the reference. The moment you de deconstruct the reference, anger is gone already. Then you are thinking, you are very bad on you, I mean. What kind of a bad thing, petty-minded idea that I, I uh, got hold, held by, you know, previously. I was angry for this petty thing, very trivial thing. And I wasted my time, I became sick. And you know, like there are people who are getting cancers because of anger. Right? All the good cells are going down. Right? Some, sometimes not the food, it's the anger, bad emotions. They're becoming sick over time. So, uh, you have to do the non-identification, anatta. Say for instance, someone blamed you yesterday. Now you are thinking about it at this point. So then, you are thinking that it was not me, it was my previous self that was insulted, blamed, criticized by somebody. Huh? 
2024 September 7 Saturday 2:03 p.m. That was not me. That was my previous self. That was affected by somebody, but I'm a different self now. Everything is okay at that point. No anger, nothing to uh, maintain, no grudge, anything. So that is what we can do during the anger. Now anger has already happened. Now you are learning a lot from your own anger, the problems you created. Then what you call post-anger situations. You are looking at what happened. I have to bring reflection, I have to do sati sampajanya, yeah, work on it, right? So this is how we're going to work on uh, anger, dosa. So it's a process. It's a process. I remember one very uh, story. It, it happened in a Dhamma school uh, in a temple in Canada. Uh, they have, uh, we invited a local uh, professor to, uh, to teach Dhamma school students. Uh, so uh, he always talk about anger management. He doesn't talk about uh, other topics. So he always talk about anger. So uh, when he comes to Dhamma school, he is teaching the uh, advanced class. So he taught four days in a row of this anger management. So on the fifth day, teenagers didn't feel comfortable about this topic, you know. It's always talking about anger management. So they kind of, they kind of smiling a little bit, laughing. And he got mad. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Is this the way how you respect the teacher? I'm your teacher, you have to respect me, you know. And he got very mad. And he stopped the class, he left. <laughs> and, and then he complained to us. I was a uh, principal at that time, Dhamma school. <laughs> said, you know, these students, they are very bad guys. We have to teach them. He said, what happened? Then I had to investigate this. And one student told me, yes, I know that uh, we are bad. It's not good to uh, smile or laugh. But he cannot be mad too, right? Because he's teaching anger management for four days in a row. <laughs> <laughs> it's like this. So I think it's a very uh, uh, active thing. That's how we're going to work on the anger. Dana, what I said was, uh, uh, every dana is valuable. I was trying to tell people to do it in a bit classy, great way. Classic means that you don't, like, ha you have to spend a lot of money. Uh, do it in the proper way. Do it in a great way. Think nicely, think great. Even you offer a small thing if you cannot afford. Uh, not always think about your wish bag, you know, the bucket list, right, in the temple. When you bring dana, you are thinking that may this dana be offered to all the Sangha members in the past, now, and in the future. You have to create good karmas first. Then at the end, when you pour the water, at that time you can uh, think about your wishes. So if you are not doing as such, I think you are going to cheapen your uh, dana uh, effect. Yeah, that's what I said. Because Buddha in one sutta says one of the results people are going through uh, because of the past dana is that ulare su pancha su kama gune su chittang namati. There are people who have lots of things compared to other people. They have uh, housing, they have uh, transportation, they have money, they have uh, people around them. But uh, they are not able to enjoy any of those things. They are not able to sleep in that uh, comfy, cozy bed. They are not able to eat the good food. They always eat the expired food from the fridge. And uh, they, they, their mind doesn't tell them to use the good car, the good one. They always go to the uh, dilapidated, rundown car, you know, thinking this is the antique car, you know, good one. <laughs> and uh, their mind doesn't tell them to go enjoy your own comforts. Because in the past, like Buddha says, they have given these things to get, but with lots of expectations. Because of that, when they get them, they cannot enjoy. But they get to see other people who have not a lot of money. They are just barely living, but they are very happy with what they have. Why? They haven't given a lot in the past life, but they have given that small, tiny thing with lots of respect, thinking about the recipient, not about you. Right? 
normally when people give dana they only think about them mostly ah may i have a uh, this and that may i be a deva in the next life you know <laughs> <laughs> these wishes then you are cheapening that is the way how people do dana in a uh, cheap way yeah Would you, would you mind standing for all of us to see you? Okay. Yeah, okay. Covered, yeah. yeah, good afternoon. Great. Good afternoon. Yeah, you say about the thought. Is the thought is come back from our karma or our past life or new moment? Thought? Yeah, the thought. Sometimes we want to do things, is it? Like we want to do the action or something. Is it from the past life? Or, I mean, the karma? Or is it a new habit? Or, or a new moment? Oh. Okay, and I think is the Buddha said is no I, me, and mine, and uh, who make the decisions? Okay, okay, interesting. Uh, thoughts are coming because we have a mind, but when the thoughts are conditioned, things like that can happen. Uh, say, for instance, uh, in the Abhidhamma, they say there are certain thoughts people are going through all the time, it's Abhidhamma, uh, because of past life. But in the early suttas, we don't believe that. Uh, but we understand because you carry a mind, thoughts are always uh, flowing out. So it's, it's, it's normal. Uh, so we have the responsibility to change these thoughts into the wholesome side. Uh, not that your thoughts are already being uh, taken away by somebody, a god or maybe your past karmas. You have good thoughts, uh, you have the fresh thoughts. But they may be akusala or kusala, mostly akusala. So we, we can change them onto the kusala with the practice that we are talking here. That's how we look at it. Second is, uh, you said Buddha talks about uh, there is no I, me, myself. That is at a different level, layer. But at the same time he talks about there is I, me, myself. If not, who is have, going through the pain? If you have a knee pain, who is going through that pain? Is it the Buddha or somebody else? Is it you? If you get a cancer, who is going through that cancer? The pain, mental pain and physical pain. Yes, we are going through that. But at a certain level, when you develop your thoughts with Sadhisampaja and all that, you understand this I, me, myself is a labeling. You come to that point. But that is not the first way to understand, first approach to understanding. It's a different higher understanding, but at the same time, Buddha talks about I, me, myself exist on a different layer. I, me, myself do not exi exist on another layer. Both have to be understood. If there is no I, me, myself, then how come these karmas are going to next life? Huh? Why we do good karmas? Who is carrying to the next life? I think your first question has the answer to the sec second question. Your first question, you were thinking about uh, whether karmas are disturbing our thoughts. Uh, uh, there are some conditioning, uh, but mostly we can change our thoughts because thoughts are natural to all of us. I think we can take two more questions. Uh, Bhante, uh, um, so we respect to Indriya Samvara. Um, in the Sutta, we mostly see that, um, uh, like what Bhante says, it's not like you close your eyes, right? And it's mostly with reference to uh, you don't get caught up in the features, right? But then um, in Mahapari Nibbana Sutta, uh, Venerable Ananda asked uh, the Buddha, how should we deal with uh, members of opposite sex then? There's this uh, very short passage like that says, uh, Ananda, do not see, 
do not see, right? Then Ananda replied back, what if we cannot avoid seeing? Then say, uh, the Buddha replied, uh, Ananda do not speak, right? And so on and so forth. So how, how, how do we reconcile with these two um, kind of conflicting advice? Yeah. So it's not conflicting actually. Oh. Mahaparnibbana Sutta of the Diga Nikaya uh, has a lot of information uh, after the Buddha. Uh, the relic worship, how was the uh, funeral happened, they all are in that Sutta. So we believe that this Sutta was later adapted in the transmission uh, as a scholar, scholarly speaking. So when you look at the Sutta, there are some suttas where we don't see, you can't do it unless you have a, a expertise, huh? because we, we juggle with the expertise over here. Uh, some suttas don't seem to be having the Buddha stone, very, very few, huh? not all the suttas. Say, for instance, the Asalayana Sutta and the Vasetta Sutta in the Majjhimanikaya. They are, it is said that the Buddha says the Brahmins are lower than the dogs. That's sutta. So now the problem is, why did the Buddha want to go as far as a dog to talk about, not even dog, dog and the female dog. And why he wanted to go as far as the dogs to talk about the Brahmins. So what has happened uh, along the transmission of the Tipitaka, Dhamma Vinaya is that, uh, when the Buddha passed away, uh, most of the monks who have been preserving these texts are unenlightened monks. So these unenlightened monks had two groups. One is the high caste monks, those who became monks from high caste, Brahmin, Brahmin, Kshatriya. Other group is all the lower caste uh, groups at that time in India. Uh, say for instance, uh, those ones, weaving groups and all that. So they both had arguments. They both had uh, some uh, provocations between each other. So we believe that the Asalayana or Vasetta Sutta was transmitted by mostly by the uh, those monks who came from lower caste want to attack the Brahmins. <laughs> That's a scholarly idea which I observe. And uh, some other suttas where we see an, a, 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 a scathing attack on the lower caste where we cannot feel Buddha is trying to uh, differentiate these people. They said everybody is equal. It's, it is like Ganga, Yamuna, Acharavati, Sarabhu, Mahi, these uh, very uh, long rivers in India, get in touch with the ocean. Then uh, none of the rivers say we come from Mahi, we come from Acharavati, we come from Ganges. It's ocean. Right? We all are one at that point. So then we cannot uh, appreciate that kind of a division, but because of the transmission happened through unenlightened monks, so they added their own perspectives at some point, not everywhere. So now the I think I don't know whether how many of you know the, the story that he is talking here. Now there is a point that uh, uh, would you mind to explain explain that to uh, us? Yeah, yeah. The, it's, it's just a very short passage um, where Ananda asks how how should uh, okay let me tell you. Bhante Ananda was criticized by all the other monks, most of the other monks for allowing ma uh, women to become nuns and, uh, and pushing the Buddha to grant the permission. Okay? Yeah. So I feel this was, for, this was targeted to Bhante Ananda, this story. <laughs> Uh, the story is like, uh, it is said that Bhante Ananda asked from the Buddha, Bhante, how does a monk behave uh, with a woman, lady? He said, better not to see. Now my question is, how is it going to work? Can you even uh, survive without dana? <laughs> right? This is not going to be practical. I feel like this is a kind of a Brahmanist. Bra Brahmins really attack the women. Women cannot learn anything. If they talk Dhamma, they cut the tongue out. Yes, Brahmins in the Vedas. So I think the scathing attack on the, the ladies, uh, you see in some of the suttas, they came from these Brahmin uh, flavored monks. Uh, so they, 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 they would have, uh, uh, you know, brought into this path. Ah, so that is what I, I think. Uh, I saw some. Otherwise, some... they are not practical. Yeah, very much. But definitely we should we should create our own boundaries with everybody, not even ladies. <laughs> Every with everybody. So that's not something to ask. 
But going to that kind of a very extreme uh, kind of idea is not going to work. Oh, okay, okay. Thank you, Bhante. Yeah. Thank you, Bhante. And plus, uh, your sila is your sila. It should not change because of you see somebody. <laughs> right? <laughs> Just because you see somebody, why your sila is going to be changed? And the story says, better not to see. If they talk, talk less. If they talk more, uh, elder than you, make it a sister. Right? I mean, <laughs> so. Uh, definitely, Mahaparinibbana Sutta is uh, an added sutta. You see all the things. That is the sutta where it is said Buddha asked devotees to go to India, pilgrimage. Yes. Uh, I mean, we don't know. I mean, th this is the sutta where Buddha, it is said the Buddha said that. Uh, is, uh, a faithful devotee must see four places. The birthplace of the Buddha and then the place of the Buddhahood, the place where Buddha held the Dhamma Chakra Sutta, and then the uh, Parnibbana place. So, I mean, better to go and see these places. But the accuracy, verification, yet to uh, be uh, in front of the scholars because they have to study all the. Now, uh, they have some issues with, to, to check with the Tibetan manuscripts, Chinese manuscript, and then a Sanskrit one with the Pali. So, uh, if they can do a thorough research about this thing, they can find out what parts are missing, what parts are added. Yes. So I think that is what we can think about it. Okay, okay. So because uh, it's not practical, you know. Okay. I, I should read the, some comparative so study. Kind of on the those uh, teachings have demonized the women in the text. We don't mm -hmm. have to demonize anybody. It's, it's our own demon if we <laughs> get stuck. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Bhante. Okay, and then, yes. And last one, yes. There are two more, yeah. 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 Uh, uh, Bante, uh, just now to a question uh, uh, that was raised, Bante actually said that uh, Sati and uh, Sampajana will arise together. You know, I was wondering, Bante, is it possible if just Sati arises uh, without Sampajana? Because, uh, say for instance, you know, anger arises and yet, you know, the person still lashes out. Because if there is a uh, Sampajana, that person would have acted appropriately. So, uh, my question is that... Like, can so you can't take the other way around. You can't take the other way around. Okay, right. You have to take it this way around. Uh, now, uh, actually it is not Sati. Now, ideally speaking, Sati Sampajana must arise together. Ideally speaking. But there are moments when you don't know Sampajana, at that point, you may have sati a little bit, mm. but it's not the full grown, full bloom sati. Okay. Yes. So that is how we have to understand uh, the ideal level of sati sampajanya. If you really want to have mindfulness, sati sampajanya will arise together uh, in that practice. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you, Bhante. Uh, and as a continuation, say if uh, uh, sampajana has arisen together with the sati. Uh, and one is able to uh, act appropriately, restrain, or wherever it is, you know, uh, is it due solely to uh, the Sampajana or is it a wisdom faculty that arises that uh, will tell one how to act appropriately? Uh, can you rephrase again? Uh, someone? Yeah, say uh, uh, someone uh, has the Sati Sampajana, okay, and let's say for instance a defiled state arises mm -hmm. and with the Sampajana in place, Right, he is able to act appropriately, restraining mm -hmm. oneself or whatever. Guaranteed. You know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I was wondering uh, if the Sampajana component alone uh, is responsible for the appropriate action or is it a wisdom faculty that arises that tells the person to you know, act appropriately? Appropriate part is Yoniso Manasikarati. We discuss along the path, right? How did we uh, talk about Yoniso Manasikara? We talk about Yoniso Manasikara, which is a part of uh, the practice. So Sati Sampajanya, where does it come? Can you remember? In the list, we discuss it. Noble friends. Noble friends. Listening, listening to, to Dhamma. Dhamma. Uh, what? Huh? Sada. 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 Yoniso Manasikara. 
That means Yoniso Manasikara leads to the Sati Sampajanya. And then Indriya Sang. So Yoniso Manasikara is prior to the that means Yonuso Manasikara is the most important thing in this uh, Sati Sampajana practice. Okay. Uh, what is Yonuso Manasikara? Wise consideration. Huh? Wise consideration. Yeah, 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 let's look at it from a layman's perspective, not without complicating. <laughs> <laughs> being able to being able to see any phenomenon, anything in our life in its in its or down to its origin. It's like an iceberg. The tip of the iceberg is only visible. And the rest of the iceberg is below the sea, sea level. So this is the same thing that happens to us when we make decisions about others and us. We make a fractional understanding about the situation and we make the decision. So when we have Yonuso Manasikara, we go down to the bottom of the problem. Go to the bottom of the problem and then to understand what is causing this problem and then to solve it. So only when you have it, then Sati Sampajanya coming. Actually, in many other suttas, Buddha says, without Yonso Manasikara, you won't have access to Noble Eightfold Path, Samaditi. Because Sati Sampajanya is a part of Samma, uh, Sati. So that means between uh, Yonso Manasikara to Samma, uh, Sati Sampajanya, Noble Eightfold Path is going to in, be in place. So uh, Yonso Manasikara is prior to Sati Sampajanya. That means you can't practice meditation without you also must come. Okay. That's a uh, attitude change. Okay. Right. Thank you, Bhante. Okay, then last. Yes, please. Maybe just uh, Bhante, just a follow up. Yeah. And, uh, earlier, Bhante was talking about uh, reflection on the action before, during, and after. I believe there is. This sutta, it talks about that. Is it the Ambalika Rahula Voda Sutta? That's a sutta. That's yeah. a sutta, right? Ambalatika Rahula. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I did, this is in a Majima Nikaya, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, the other, the other the query I want to make, Bante, is regards to anger. Mm -hmm. There are some commentators who say that uh, anger is a spontaneous emotional reaction before it reaches the mind. So earlier Bhante was, was uh, uh, ex, uh, advocating that there must be reflection so, so, that, so that you can curb your anger. But, but unfortunately, anger is a spontaneous emotional reaction. So, so, so how do you get reflection to come into play before before the emotional reaction. Then the, uh, my next question, Bhante, is just basically on the uh, Sampajana. How does Pariyati and Patipati fit into the scheme of things? Hmm. Yeah, this, this, this are my question. Okay, so uh, for the second question, what I can say is that uh, uh, emotions are arising out as uh, we continue our life as a sentient being. But when you reflect the urge, the urge uh, for those uh, evolutionary uh, dynamics to appear will be well monitored. Otherwise, this is normally happening. Now, this is the difference between a, someone who has no Dhamma practice and who has uh, a level of Dhamma practice. Uh, that one person is getting easily angry, the other person takes time to become angry or no anger, no to minimal anger. And you can see that. So that means they are uh, what you call um, uh, generational or maybe uh, existential emotions have been uh, kind of uh, well managed. So that means although psychologically speaking those things can happen to us, but when we practice we can overcome, we can sort of uh, challenge that natural phenomenon within us. Right? Even you see that among animals. Some animals are very uh, ferocious. Some are very tame. Not that they are domesticated only. They are naturally tame. But, but they are seemingly very vicious animals. <laughs> seemingly very vicious. Uh, they must do something to others. But 
remember the incident uh, uh, one cobra came to a temple uh, buddha's temple chetavana ram other monks caught him into a pot uh, they let him go inside a pot and then uh, covered the, the lid with a lid and then uh, they went for the dana came around the morning then uh, they told the buddha and other monks we found a cobra in the temple we put him inside the pot the pot is in the kitchen so there was a monk who really wants to die by that time <laughs> take his life uh, spiritual failure not other failures <laughs> spiritual failures so he was thinking oh what a good condition is that so without even having dana he slowly walk into the kitchen so he opened the lid he put his hand inside the pot and then he he feels the snake body but nothing is happening <laughs> then he try to find out the snake's mouth open his mouth put his hand inside he even didn't do anything so he went back to the dana hall told the other monks that's not a cobra you know another snake very very uh, harmless snake then the buddha said no it's a cobra very venomous cobra but you know why he did not bite you it was your mother for many lifetimes <laughs> no. your mother will not bite you ask another monk to go and try to put the hand <laughs> so why this that means sansari friendships the loving relationships are continuing into the other lives they remember even they become animals <coughs> right so that means uh, there are certain very surprising things happening you know uh, with, with with the uh, natural traits so one thing might be like that but anyways we can challenge we can change those natural phenomena third one you ask pariyatti and uh and pati 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 pariyatti uh, means fit into the scheme uh, pariyatti pati pati another one pati ved yeah, pariyatti means uh, uh, dhamma vinaya uh, and uh, learning dhamma vinaya pati pati means the practice of the dhamma vinaya pati ved means not even the practice uh, you need to uh, attain certain levels of enlightenment so these three have to work on uh, so you are asking the connection to i think the whole dhamma teaching is about these three things all these dhamma teachings are bringing us to this pariyatti patipatti pativeed all right i hope uh, you got some understanding insights uh, we are kind of behind the time so now we are taking uh, i think is there anybody who has a question maybe a short question yeah very short question if you have Uh, Pante, can you please explain the difference between reflection thinking and uh, investigation, or are they the same? Reflection? The, because you mentioned about reflection, reflection. and thinking. Reflection. Pacha vekkana we yeah. call Pali. And then? Investigation. Investigation means uh, uh, Dhamma vichaya. Two, two things. Yeah, yeah two different yeah, things. Yeah, reflection is a normal thing that we all can do. Dhamma vichaya is an investigation of the Dhamma things. So it's a little bit higher, advanced thing. Yes. When you have the proper reflection, you can definitely go check this uh, Bodjanga, the second yes. Bodjanga. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Bhante. The second question, in short one, is that uh, when Bhante mentioned about the non identification under the brain structure, mm -hmm. uh, Bhante mentioned about anatta. Mm. Uh, so when the anger arises at a moment, can we just uh, contemplate on uh, anicca impermanence as well? Because the anger arises, then stays there, and then it falls off. So that is uh, part of the uh, anicca. Yeah, we we could do, we could do, but there are uh, better ways to handle. Okay. We could do that too. Uh, the better thing is not to bring anger to us, then to think about anicca. Yes. Better uh, abort the process of anger. at the beginning mm. right okay. when we when we abort the process it will be stopped uh, rather than when we let it happen and then try to overcome it so let's say uh, let's say you are working with other people you know there is someone who is a very challenging difficult person in your family and you know anger can uh, arise any time today <laughs> because of the ideas so you know you are ready for that not to respond 
react to them but to understand uh, just not to provocate these people so build up that sadda trust and then to work with these people or minimizing the the objects for anger uh, that is better than bring the anger uh, you know uh, and then to do something you know it's it's like uh, letting the mosquito come inside the house and trying to ask me uh, should I kill or not? You know, I mean, not, not you. I mean, <laughs> there are people asking like that. You know, yeah. and there's so many mosquitoes in my house. Should I kill or not? What to do? Then I'm asking, how did the mosquitoes get in your house? Maybe you are not a responsible person. You have opened your all the windows, doors. You are not properly closing them. Maybe you are not uh, cleaning your place. Maybe cleaning the outskirts. So let's destroy those conditions first. Take care of those conditions first, then the problem will be 99%, at least 90% solved at the beginning. Not that they're coming and then what to do. Yes. Thank uh, you. That is one way to look at it. But still, uh, I know there are moments where people cannot do everything at the same time. Let's say still anger is arising, anicca can be a really of help. So, so way to look at it. Okay. Thank you, Mandy. Yeah. Not even anicca, dukkha. If I uh, re react to this person, I will be in suffering too, right? I've been Can suffering too. Can you tell an anecdotal story about anger? In one of our discussions, we were talking about anger and, uh, the, and the Buddha Rupa. And, uh, and, and this person was saying that uh, she gets angry very easily every time, but she has got uh, Buddha Rupa at home. So every time when she wants to shout at the children, she sees a Buddha Rupa, she will curb her anger. So, so maybe that's a very good advice that we should have a Buddha Rupa at home. So that each time we see the Buddha Rupa, yeah. we can yeah. curb our anger. Yeah. Different ways to look at it, but uh, they are all plaster treatments. Plaster, plaster treatments. Uh, so we have to find out a very uh, substantial treatment. That is what we are learning from Dhamma. Uh, initially, they are good. Uh, they are good, but as we go on, we have to find very substantial solutions with the Dhamma practice. Alright, so now we are going to take a, uh, probably 10 minutes of rest and then we are going to, uh, because of the timing, uh, we will limit our walking and then we will do more meditation after that. Okay, so may all the good karmas we make in today uh, by joining the Q&A about Sampajana, clear knowing, be supportive and helpful for all of us to attain. The supreme bliss of Nippon. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. So make sure to come back here uh, to uh, 52 over here. You have noticed?